Struggling to take your TIG welds to the next level? Well, I've got a few techniques to show you how to get from good to great. Constant motion. The go-to method for most welders. Simply maintain a consistent speed while adding filler. It's straightforward, but highly effective. Simply strike an arc, get your puddle going, and maintain a steady movement. Adding filler at a consistent cadence is key. You can synchronize with the beat of music, but be aware, different songs may change your ripple spacing. Also, counting beats like one and two and three and four and can provide a rhythmic guide when you're practicing. However, a downside is when working on surfaces that aren't perfectly smooth, any speck of spatter on your workbench or your part can catch your hand, which can lead to disaster. This method served me well for years, but my preferred method is the move and pause method. And it's as simple as it sounds. Simply move, pause, dip, repeat. What I love about this technique is its consistency. I can precisely position each dime exactly where I want it, and if I encounter any obstacles, I can easily pause and readjust before either continuing on or stopping. However, like all techniques, there's a downside, especially for beginners. The pausing increases the welding time, resulting in more heat being put into the workpiece. This heat saturation can make welding difficult. One workaround is to switch to another piece while letting the overheated one cool down. Now you might mistake this one for the move and pause method, but there's a subtle difference. I'm actually backing up slightly during each pause. When you're using the move and pause method really quickly, it can leave a trail in your ripples, and to avoid this, you can add a slight backward motion, about a sixteenth of an inch, at each pause while adding filler, then continue on. A slight modification of this technique works wonders for vertical up welding. Instead of adding rod while backing up, I first add the rod, then backtrack. This backward motion helps smooth out the drooping effect that you normally get when you're doing vertical welding. Speaking of vertical welding, I have a video right here showing how I apply this technique to a 3G pass.